Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So it's Thursday, and that can only mean one thing. We've got a new update from the Space Engineers development team, and you're probably wondering, what exactly have we got this week? Well, we've got a whole variety of exciting new features to have a play around with. So first off, let's have a look at the new block that's been introduced. Now, this is the sensor. It has a little bit of a motion sensor, detects ships, small ships, and even the presence of objects flying past it. So let's actually have a look in our inventory and look what it looks like. So down here, we have the camera block and we have the sensor block right next to it. They're exactly the same size, but the sensor block has a little control panel and a little bit of a flashing panel. So if I step back, you'll see that this sensor here is controlling that light on the right and they're exactly the same size on the small ships as well. And you can, dete you can detect it pretty much at any distance you would like now they have a, a certain range up to 50 meters so up to 50 meters is the range where they detect and past that then they don't detect anything at all so you can't really use them to deploy weapons on our ships and the more of the distance of course the more of the power usage will go up as well now that is pretty nice and dandy but let's head on down to the more features so we've got detect players so we can turn that off and it'll no longer detect us we've also got detect floating objects so it'll detect an object if we throw an object at it and we've also got detect small ships so we can use it for a big hangar door and detect large ships as well so we could even build some sort of reversing sensor if we wish to now let's have a look at some of the things i've had to mess around with i've only spent about 20 30 minutes having a quick build and just showing off some of the ideas now, first off, you could do something like this, a door. Now, a door before, you'd have to press a button or even access a control panel. But what I've done here is use the new flashing light block that I'll cover a little bit later on one sensor. And then on the second sensor, I've got the doors slowly peeling aside. Now, you could even use the same sort of setup on a small ship. So we've got my small ship here. And we've also got this new sort of staircase that we've got built into the back. And we can simply hop in inside and we can get in the cockpit and you can see the staircase behind us folding up with the sensor there on the back just a really nice little feature we've also got the chairs in the back and a backup emergency button in case something goes wrong and we can step away from that and that'll all automatically go up you see that sensor block is just so much cooler and so much more immersive now if we continue on we can activate a few more of these things so what i've got here is we've got a standard sensory door and we've got some warning lights connected to it as well so as soon as we step in the sensory range you can see it's changed its angle now something else that these are quite useful for you can see it's quite dark in here and now what i've got up here is an actual sensor that's going to turn these lights on so it's actually a way of saving a lot of power so we enter this area the lights come on we can also use this to do little doors like this to stop us even having to press anything if you really want to get lazy and we've just got a simple control center here just a really nice idea having these little sensor blocks and just picking up and just doing it a sort of lazy way but at the same time it just makes it so much more immersive now as we head into this next room we've got quite an interesting setup here so here we have some spotlights and we also have a number of buttons now the buttons correspond with the spotlight up there so if a sensor is tripped in one of the areas it'll correspond with whichever button is above and it'll tell me which light to actually press so if I press this here, we can access the camera and we can see that sensor is connected to that room. Now what I'm going to do is actually access that sensor light and trip it, basically give it a false sort of alarm. So I'm going to head down here and we're going to give it quite a basic little trip by setting it on the Tet large ships. And we can see that that light has actually started to flash. Now this rotates around, I don't know the reason why, I just thought it'd be cool at the time. But you can see it's corresponded with that button so I would know someone has entered that area due to the sensor setting that off. So it's just an interesting thing you can do with the sensors as well. So let's head back outside. So before we actually head out of this area, we're going to actually have a look at the new settings for the lights. Now, these can make quite an exciting variety of different things. You can have warning lights, flashing lights, and you can even have a sort of pulsy light in a room to give a really interesting sort of environment. Or even a light to signal for help. Now, in this setting, we can actually have a look for our light. So we'll scroll all the way down here to light 47. That's the one next to us. And we can see we have the radius fall off intensity, the standard controls. Now we have blink intervals. So this is the distance or the, the difference between each blink. So will there be one second, two seconds, three seconds? You can see how it's blinking on the left side there. 
or will they be really long, slow sort of beeps? And that's quite interesting to have a mess around with. And if we lower that back down, you can see the blinks are quite a lot shorter. Now we also have blink length, how long the light will actually hold the blink for. So if we bring that up to a longer setting, we can actually see that blink is going to be held for a lot longer after it blinks. Now let's hop back into the console and scroll back down to our light, to light 47. And we have the final thing is blink offset. Now this is the offset of blinking as, as a percentage, basically the blink as the interval. So I'm going to increase this and I'll show you this. Now this is going to give us a lot more of a, a hold between the two blinks. So it's going to be off for a lot longer and then it's going to be back on. So it's just a really interesting way. So you can offset it with some different colors. Maybe have some red and yellow lights to signal a danger area, just like I've got in this doorway up here. Now as I exit this area, the sensor should shut the lights off behind me. There we go, save some power. And as we enter this door, we then have lights warning me that there's gonna be a slight sort of change or maybe even an airlock sort of pressure change, but we are in Space Engineers. That's not quite yet involved. Now we've got the explosive warhead and as you can see that some green tips have been added. Now this thing can be quite exciting now. So let's hop on here, open to the cockpit and you can notice we actually have some detonation timer. So this can go all the way up to one hour. So you could plant this, hide this in a ship. They could be an hour away from you or you could be back at your base and it could blow up and you could just pretend that you had nothing to do with it. Now you can start the countdown. You can see the countdown is going to start and you can also stop it. Now we also have safety. Now the safety here allows you to detonate it from the control panel. So this will allow you to manually detonate it. You can also detonate these with the use of an antenna and being far, far away and blowing it up. So let's have a, a basic countdown and see what's going to happen. So we'll set it to 10 seconds like so. And we'll start the countdown and we'll go away. And you can see that the lights are blinking, warning us that something's going to happen. Something's going to blow up. Poor little Henry there. He's not going to stand a chance with that big warhead next to him. We'll just have to see what's going to happen. So we've got 10 seconds and there it goes. Now Henry's components are all gone. And we've also got the floor blown out below. The blast door seems to still be intact. Let's have a look. Yeah, blast door's still intact. We could continue and go through there. That's pretty cool. But that is basically everything within the new patch. And there's a whole variety of different things that you can do with it. And I'm just happy to see something like this being introduced. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.